This is the tree, close up. These are the knees. I see a silhouette of a woman praying. That's what I, I call this one, prayer. Hi, I'm Bill Butler. This is the tree that I collected in 2014. That would be last year. This is the uh, end of February 2015. What's catching your eye, I hope, is the knees. These knees are part of the tree, directly off to the side, hanging on at the periphery of the roots. This is the kind of tree you look for in the swamps when you're out there hunting and poking. You want something that's got roots that are flaring out on all sides. This certainly had that in spades, but then doggone it, it had to go and have knees on it, and that just makes you say, oh, gotta have it, gotta have it. So here we are, 2015, ready to do some styling on the tree. First styling, I've got this sagging tissue in the front, in the back, inside of here, this is the old hardwood. You can see that the tree is wrapping underneath here, trying to get around this dead wood inside of it. Here we have a second sag in the back. It's got dead wood behind it. Whatever the potting level of the tree, It will not be that. Here's the silhouette of the woman praying, perhaps holding a book. I need to go through my book of saints. I'm gonna be going through here today, removing a lot of these small roots that are hanging off the sides of these larger roots. This root stays, this root perhaps doesn't, but certainly the small fines that are hanging off the sides are coming off. Here's a significant flaw in the base of the tree. I have this heavy root coming down, and I have this root coming from over here, wrapping across it. As you can see, this is embedded. This root is embedded in this root. It's not something I would have wanted. It's the kind of thing that if I had had my way, I would have come along sooner and trimmed it off. And as I'm cutting this particular root, I can feel that he's, he's dead. If he had something live growing in him, he didn't have much of it. Let's let this grow, take off these other guys that, that just aren't needed to showcase what's going on in the tree. When working with your trees, it helps to have a clear vision of what it is you're doing. You need to sit down with each of your trees and figure out what is the end game. What design? Is it a formal upright? Is it a flat top? Ask the tree. Look at it. Figure out what is the tree telling you. If you can't draw a tree, I can draw a tree. If you can't draw a tree, draw triangles. Take the tree, figure out it's going to be a flat top. Draw a triangle. Figure out, is the triangle going to lean over here? Is the triangle going to lean over here? Stick figure your tree. Figure out what is its general shape. I want, I want the vision of this tree to sweep in a smooth curve rather than an S shape takes you out of the frame, takes your eyes out of the frame. This brings you up and over, bring you up, around, back down to here. It tapers off in this direction. That can be towards the back. That can be towards the front a little bit. It's not going to be directly in line with the knee, the upper part of the tree will come out towards the front slightly and shade this portion that the older flat top trees are going to have 
a, fl a flat top and some lower branches. Bald cypress will bud back and they'll have these small branches, scraggly things down near the base that'll catch a little bit of light and that's what we're going to have in this tree. So let's get to cutting on the branches. We're going to figure out where the top of the tree is going to be before we figure out where the first branch is. If I want this tree to be about this high, I don't want that first branch to be here. This is about halfway. I want it to be just a little higher and so I'm looking at it right about here. Now let's get rid of all the same size, same, uh, same height branches to that. Flat tops can be slightly upside down in their uh, girth of the branches of course. You will see that I've got a heavy trunk line coming up off of this vertical and that's going to be a heavy one. This guy is going to be some scraggly thing. So the second branch to balance and while this one is going to be slightly forward of the side, this one I want it to be slightly back. And so saying that I could go with this. He's actually at the top trying to grow over and I could bring him over and be very very happy with that because he's already starting to roll over this cut in the, uh, up at the top. I could go with this one but pretty much yes I'm going after one of these three branches here to be the one that comes out and sweeps across the tree. I've got feeding coming in through here, here, and here. Pretty much this, is a, this tree is a tripod. I need all three parts of the tree working together. We are going to have a small branch here siphoning some energy up here. We're going to have a slightly larger branch here pulling in energy here. I'm going to be removing front branches to taper it to this point. I can't keep him. A lot of this is going to disappear. I'm going to need these branches growing to continue to draw energy up through these base roots here. So one, two branches, deadwood feature for the future. At some point in the future I'll just come in here, collar the branch, let it die, strip its bark, have its twigging, treat it with lime sulfur, it'll look fine. But for now I want to get in here and cut this tree back to here. So uh, one, two, three, keeping this. Let's, let me just take a look at that one last time. Okay. I want to roll this back, as I said, to about here. Let's go ahead and get it going. Let me just say again, it's very rare that I've got a top of the tree rolling over in exactly the part that I want it to roll over. This is, this tree is just cooperating so much. Watch the branches. When the chisel slips, you don't want to be snapping off these lower guys as much as you don't want to be 
flipping this chisel into your hand. I'm gonna cover this up later with Tight Bond 3 wood glue. Tight Bond 3 is a good glue for uh, covering up cuts on your trees because the tree can just, just roll it over. It's a food grade glue. This is the carving that I've done. I want this tree to heal over as best as it can. A slight lip at the top for the tree to grab on as it rolls over. I'd like to take that in just a little more, but I'm gonna leave that alone for now and just see how the tree goes. No, I'm gonna take that in now. I want that to have just a little bit of a, just a little bit of a curve, right? In, just in there. The rest of this I'm gonna leave alone. Now I'm gonna come back around to the front of the tree. It's right about there. So this branch will become the new apex of the tree. as this rolls over and gives me some taper. First branch, second branch, back branch. This guy can be wired up in the back and become a deadwood feature pad back here, whereas this one would just be a straight out pad coming out in this direction. What I'm doing now is I'm just going through and cutting off the terminals of the branches. I want to encourage back budding on everything you see. I'd love to see something pop in here. I know I've got wire on top of all of it, but something in here. I'd like to see it, a branch pop. so that I could get it growing a little more here rather than here. This can still stay in the ultimate design. I may wire him a little higher. He may do something else in here that uh, causes me to cut this off. You know, I've got so much of this. It's just so long and lanky. But for now, I want to get the general feel for the size of the tree. I want a sweeping top out to here. 
How high is this? It might be about four feet high here. I may take this down to here, who knows? Um, Got to wait and find out what this tree's doing. As I mentioned, this is a back future dead branch. This is a uh, future dead. These two, um, I may choose one over the other. I may eliminate them both. I'm kind of liking the idea of this guy more than this guy coming up. If there's dead wood in the tree, they say you should feature it. Why am I not putting it in the front? I don't know. Maybe something will grow here and I'll have future dead in the front. <coughs> so for now, let's take another look at the tree a little higher up. Here's that first branch. Here's a potential deadwood branch. Here's my second branch. Potential deadwood back branch. Here's how the tree grows at the top. Comes up in this main line with a couple of throwbacks to the other side. I tried to take the branching as three-dimensional as possible. Bring it out in as many directions as I can. This should do it for 2015 styling of this tree. I've made some uh, many decisions in, its, uh, in the branch selection. I've got a couple of uh, dead pieces up here, future dead pieces, live growth that is going to help stimulate growth in the roots. Um, the second branch, first branch, second branch, some back branches. I've got the main line of the trunk. I've got these uh, interesting branching up at the top to give you an idea of what I expect to happen in the future. But as I said before, I may end up just cutting this off here and making this the new leader of the tree. Depending on what happens in here, I'm looking for popping in here. So look for me on YouTube, Bill's by you. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye. Which one of you noticed I wasn't wearing gloves? Always make sure safety is somewhere in the top 10. <laughs>